Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sid. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Sid underscore Dwyer. And in today's video, I want to talk about Terry and Linda Jameson again, the psychic twins. Because there is really so much more about the twins. They're sort of like the Duggars, you know, there's a lot to unpack there. Oh, and I just want to say a big thank you to the support on my last video about the psychic twins. It really means a lot and I hope you enjoy this one. Also, I just want to say that a lot of people reached out to me after my last psychic twins video like people who had psychic readings from the twins and people who had interacted with the twins in the psychic community. It was all very insightful, so thank you for sharing. So to start off with, I want to talk about the twins' past in acting and modelling. We laugh when people say that we're just actresses trying to be psychics to make extra money. Because before they were profiting off claiming to be psychics, they were profiting off the gimmicky nature of being identical twins. And during this time, they were on SNL. <sighs> Some women have careers and run a household. Who knows how they do it? But even a traditional housewife like me, like me, needs tips on time management uh, to run an efficient home. And did a whole bunch of modeling stuff wearing eccentric costumes. And yeah, I could look at all of that stuff and talk about how them being in front of a camera probably made them more comfortable and confident to lie to everyone's faces about being psychics. But from this era of their lives, I think we find out something a lot more important. They accused Lady Gaga for copying their modeling work, specifically their costumes. In 2014, the twins made a post on their website titled, Hey Lady Gaga, the psychic twins called, they want their costumes back. This post has now been deleted, but you can still find it on the Wayback Machine. And basically in that post, they go over all of the costumes that Lady Gaga supposedly copied from them. And in my opinion, pretty much all of the comparisons that they make are totally ridiculous. If they both wore white feathers at one point, Lady Gaga was copying them. If they both wore beehive hairstyles, Lady Gaga was copying them. It got to the point where the twins were accusing Lady Gaga of copying them just because they both wore something shiny and pointy. These accusations are just as flimsy as their predictions. But of course, they didn't think that and they did not let it go. They were posting about it all over Twitter and Facebook. They found a page on Facebook titled Lady Gaga is the biggest copycat and were posting, they were spamming their post all over that Facebook page. Like in the comment section of other people's posts, they were spamming the link to their post. But what I'm getting at is where is this energy when they defend their predictions. All they ever say when they address the criticism around their predictions is that they have a good track record and they're like the most documented psychics when we all know that's a lie. And to this day, people think we're just making it up. They don't know that we've documented every one of our world and uh, celebrity predictions well, on tape. Everything's documented and that's what pisses the haters off the most. Well, we feel like people are sort of like professional haters. They refuse to believe no matter how much proof we show them. Mm -hmm. So the people that are making, you know, crusading tirelessly to make hate videos about us, honestly, they're not looking at the 1500 predictions that we got right on tape that are documented, Shane. Yeah. And that's pretty much all they say. They don't try and defend themselves extensively. They don't bring forth receipts like how they did with Lady Gaga. So yeah, there's a reason why they haven't addressed and defended all of the contradictions and hypocrisies and lies surrounding the 9-11 prediction, because they can't unless they actually wanted to admit to being fake. They'd go through it and be like, well, you got me there. But yeah, being psychics has been a much bigger part of the twins' lives than being models. So the fact that they don't defend their psychic work when it comes under scrutiny is very telling. And what it tells us is that they're fake. So now I just want to talk about something that I have heard the twins mention repeatedly. And that is if they use their gift to make money, then they lose their gift. We were taught that if you do it to become wealthy, you know, that you would lose the gift. Yeah, the gift and is for so, other people, right, to, to help, help others. others. That's why we do it. And if that's the case, the psychic twins should have lost their gift a long time ago. Because the twins have truly used their gift to make money in every potential facet. They have written multiple books, they have appeared on multiple talk shows, they have even tried to launch their own TV show. The twins say they want to make their gift accessible to all with their very own psychic TV show. With like a twin tuition theme. Yeah, twin tuition. They've released merch, they charge hundreds and hundreds of dollars for their psychic readings. Harry and Linda use their twin tuition to give psychic readings. 
lessons, for which they charge upwards of $500. And of course, they've done all that YouTube stuff. Them claiming that they don't use their gift to make money when they so obviously do just makes them big hypocrites. And yeah, if they truly had a gift to begin with, using their own logic, they would have lost it by now. So now I want to talk about another aspect of the twins that I think is just total bogus, and that is their channeling technique known as automatic writing. And this isn't something that they invented by any means. Automatic writing has been around for ages and people still use this technique to try and channel stuff to this day. But essentially when the twins use automatic writing, they use it to tap into the Akashic Records, which is allegedly a band of information that surrounds the earth that holds every thought or thing that has ever happened or will ever happen. And the twins use their automatic writing to tap into this realm of information. And that is where they pull their predictions from. But the thing about the way that they do their automatic writing is that after they've written it, they can barely decipher what they've written. According to them, Linda can read what she wrote, but Terry can't. It's very cryptic, only we can read it. And I can go back and read mine, she can't. Hers is like an earthquake seismograph. And the reason for why they can't understand what they wrote is because they apparently write in some kind of archaic language. We were able to write pages and pages of information in an almost archaic language. And you'll notice that when they do their automatic writing thing in prediction videos, that one of the twins will throw out a prediction or something, then the other twin will quickly co-sign that they also got that prediction using their automatic writing. That you were a druid in the seventh century. Uh, were you? Oh, that's what I got too. Yeah, okay. Do that. It mm. feels more like in two to two three years. I just wrote it too. I wrote it too. You, you, you worked magic. I got that too. Yeah. Did you ever write a screenplay? Have I written one? I was mm -hmm. getting that too for her. I did channel that we, we both wrote at the same time was that you were a Hindu monk in India. Steve or Stephen coming in too. I just have to show the names because I got be... Stephen too. Okay, Andrew, so, Stephen. Uh, Steve. so it seems like they use it just to try and like add credibility to each other. Like it makes a prediction sound a lot more believable if two people got it. And we can't even confirm if what they're saying is true because more often than not, what's written on the pages is just a bunch of scribbles. Oh, but their automatic writing isn't always just scribbles. Sometimes it can be in clear, full, complete English sentences. For example, their written 9-11 prediction. Sorry, I just have to bring up the 9-11 prediction again because they really surrounded that prediction in like a whole bunch of defenses. So I just got to bring it up again to break down another defense. So as we know, they made a very vague inaccurate prediction of 9-11 on a radio show, and then later claimed that they had also written down this prediction in great detail. But they don't just claim to have written it down, they claim to have written it down using their automatic writing technique. And it's through our automatic writing we got all that specific information about exactly what transpired. So it should just be a bunch of scribbles that nobody can understand. But no, their written 9-11 prediction is in multiple clear English sentences not an archaic language. So yeah, obviously the way that they do automatic writing has been all over the place and has changed multiple times. It started off as information being channeled from the Akashic records and then written in an archaic language to it being able to be written in English. And now they claim to get their information from spirit guides, not the Akashic records. You know, the more specific, the better, because then the guides we're working with on other dimensions can be more specific, helping us. The sisters claim to have spirit guides who direct them in an otherworldly process they call automatic writing. Uh -huh. <laughs> spirit guides. <laughs> See how powerful your guides are. Because on the Art Bell radio show, they actually have an extensive back and forth trying to clarify that they don't channel information from like spirit guides. Okay, again, I'm, I'm troubled by the word channeling because it implies that you're bringing forth some specific character from the past, but you're not really. Uh, no, this is I... sort of a collective. Is, is the Akashic are the Akashic records the same thing as a sort of a collective consciousness? I suppose, see, I don't believe that's what it is. The Akashic Records is actually a band of energy around the Earth where all thoughts exist. Why is that given? Why could that not equally be called a collective? Because it's more, it's not a collection of beings. And your question was, is it a collective of beings or consciousness? So it's not consciousness as it, you might channel a being. That's right. not the Akashic Records. Gotcha. You're channeling a spirit entity in that case. 
All right. All right. Uh, and that's not what you're doing. This is from the Akashic Records. They have just completely changed the way that they do automatic writing over time, making it yet another one of their lies and ways to con people. So the next thing I want to talk about is how they do ghost clearing. Not that it even has anything to do with psychics, but the twins are able to clear ghosts. Before I get into that any further, let me just do a quick recap of all of the things that the twins can do. They can make predictions, they can do mediumship, which connects to the deceased. They can somehow use use their bodies as a vessel for the deceased to talk through. They can do automatic writing and ghost clearing. These twins really are just blessed with all of these spiritual abilities. And you know, we're kind of full service. <laughs> we do it all. And I mean, that's even if you can call automatic writing and ghost clearing spiritual abilities. Sure, mediumship and being a psychic are, I guess, gifts from the universe. But automatic writing and ghost clearing can be learned from tutorials on YouTube. So those are abilities that they learn. Not that we don't already know that the twins are shady, but I think it's necessary to take a look at why they learned these extra skills. And not only do they learn these extra skills, but they do it in such an extra way. They always add their own spin on it. Like when they're ghost clearing, they make it seem more special and advanced than what it actually is. As you can go and then come down, they say start in the east and then move south and west and north. But there are different ways of doing it. And so what we're doing is we're going to be just moving it around and down into the corners and then what you want to do is get as much of the area as you can we're going to be checking. like anybody could do this all this is is saging a house and like that would be enough like saging is all you have to do i learned that in a tutorial but no they have to add these random hand gestures to it <laughs> They don't want to leave. They don't want to hurt you. They don't want to make you mad, but they want their... I'm just going to do a, a little bit of Reiki healing as no. well. Chokare, chokare, chokare. Okay, so we're just gonna kind of spread the good vibes around. There is no need that this needs to be that dramatic. And of course, because it's the psychic twins, they have to add one last thing to really bring it all in together. Some chanting. <laughs> And when they were ghost clearing for Gabby Hanna, she questioned what language they were chanting in. Hey, what language is that? And their response I kind of just find slightly amusing. Terry immediately explains that it's an ancient Buddhist language known as Sanskrit. That's, That's Sanskrit. It's our Buddhist cool. practice. It's a mantra called Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. And in the background, Lind is just like, it's Buddhism as if Buddhism can be a language. That's Sanskrit. And another thing that I've noticed they do when they do ghost hunting or ghost clearing is that they will often co-sign what each other say, like how they do when they automatic write. Like in this video that they did about ghost hunting with Shane Dawson, they were doing it so much to each other that people were picking up on it and making comments about it. The first thing that occurred to me was there's two male energy. Yes. I felt that too. And there's a Did woman, you? and there's also a female energy. And I'm getting the name John or Jonathan. Jonathan. I have, to, I have a full body chill. That's the first time since I walked in your house. All that I, yeah, you got it too? Yeah. So yeah, them backing each other up is just another one of their tactics to seem more believable. So yeah, I guess don't trust what the twins say when they clearly just bring a whole bunch of random spiritual things together that they just took from the internet. Like Linda's comment about it's Buddhism, it just screams like, oh, I'll just throw this thing out there, knowing that probably the average viewer won't know much about Buddhism. It won't look into it or think about it much further. And they'll be able to get away with these ridiculous shenanigans. Okay, so now onto another one of the psychic twins big claims, and that is that they are psychic detectives, which means, according to them, they have helped law enforcement crack cases. And I will say that there's not really that much to go into about this, because they do stay fairly tight-lipped about it. They'll usually just casually drop that they're psychic detectives in an interview or something and elaborate no further. But like with most of what they do, some contradictions have appeared, and from that we can glean some logical conclusions for why they claim to be psychic detectives. So firstly, they have claimed to have worked with the police. We've worked as psychic detectives helping police with murder cases, cold cases, missing persons cases. And the Pentagon before. Decide to use you in any way or well, look we into have. it here? We've worked for the Pentagon. We have worked in, with Project Foresight. You have. Yeah, but we're not allowed to talk about we it. We have to kill you well, now. You just did. But they've also claimed that the authorities have shut their website down multiple times. Now, you, the FBI also, why did the FBI close down your website? 
Well, they shut down every website that had our prediction, prediction on, on it. it. The government contacted you to help them with the, the government future? actually shut down our website and all the sites that had our predictions on it at the time. So what I don't get is how the authorities can be working with them one moment and then the next moment they're shutting down their website. Like, are you working together or not? A common theme with the twins is padding their resume with all sorts of stuff to make them seem more legit. And this is just another case of that. But it seems like they don't know which lie makes them sound better. Both working with the FBI and being shut down by the FBI make them seem more valid. And they clearly can't pick which lie to go with. They're probably like, both make us sound better. Even though they contradict each other, we'll just say both and hope nobody notices. Also, in an interview with Insider, they get into how they are psychic detectives and how they have assisted police. And so, Insider puts them through a little bit of a test. So, Insider takes the twins to a dock where Olivia Newton-John's boyfriend, Patrick McDermott, went missing. Like, Insider wants answers. They want the twins to crack the case for what happened to Patrick McDermott. And this is what they say. Of Patrick McDermott disappeared, baffling authorities. Uh, We're approached by the police. We don't really approach them. But the Insider has sought the same help from those who say they've assisted police in the past. Linda and Terry Jameson, the psychic twins, could bring a stunning break in the case. There's no dead body here. I don't sense death here. Do the sisters sense there are eerie clues at the dock where Olivia Newton-John's boyfriend was last seen on land? Feel we that. feel that he may have faked his disappearance. Uh, we don't feel he's in the country right now. He went south. We feel that he may be even as far as the Mexico area. The twins say there could be other clues that McDermott may not have acted alone. Yeah, I don't know whether it was a planned ride or a hitchhiking mm. kind of situation, but there was a guy involved with a black pickup truck. Yeah. Uh, an older model. Yeah, I think it may have even been premeditated. The psychic twins also believe they have a description of a man McDermott may have sought help from. Dark hair, uh, feels like young, mm. feels like 30s. It was picked to help. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing five, eight, yeah. approximately. Uh, kind of tan skin, brown eyes. Brown eyes. Whether it be the Pentagon, the FBI, the local police, a private investigator, there is nothing that any of those people could do with the information that the twins gave. They say Patrick is in Mexico. What are the authorities just gonna search all of Mexico? Obviously not, making that information useless. Nobody could act of the information the twins gave. It is just far too broad. Surely no police officer would accept their help if this is the kind of help that they offer. There is just no way that any sort of law enforcement has seriously worked with the psychic twins before. Okay, so now I want to talk about some things that the twins preface their psychic readings with, or will use if they get a prediction wrong. And the things that I'm gonna bring up are essentially their get out clauses. If something that they have predicted turns out to be wrong, they can just be like, don't say I didn't warn you. Which in my opinion is a pretty shady thing to do, especially considering that they do intuitive medical predictions. We do medical intuitive work, which is diagnosing illness. Being able to diagnose somebody with a medical condition using their psychic abilities is a pretty big thing to do. And if you saw my last video on the psychic twins, you will know how them getting a medical diagnosis wrong affected someone negatively. Like they told a lady one thing in regards to a medical situation, but it turned out to be completely something else. Um, and I had a life-changing medical issue that I needed an answer to and they turned out to be wrong about it. An excuse that they use for why they may not give somebody an accurate reading is that the person they're reading for may not be open-minded. In their book, Separated at Earth, which I will be getting to shortly, they talk about how somebody may not get good results from one of their psychic readings because they're not open-minded. We encourage anyone who is wanting a reading to keep an open mind. People who are skeptical or fearful about getting a psychic reading tend to suck all the air out of the room like a black hole, making information more difficult to receive. But the lady who they gave an inaccurate medical diagnosis was perfectly open-minded. She talked how she was a fan of the twins at first. Okay, so um, to start out with, I just want to say that when I got a reading with the twins, I... I'm a huge fan. Um, I bought and read both of their books. 
to uh, die too young in psychic intelligence. She was as open-minded as you could get. So there's no reason why the twins couldn't have given her an accurate reading. You know, telling somebody that they're going to meet the love of their life in two years and it not happening is one thing, but telling somebody that they have an illness is a whole new extreme. For one, that could cause somebody to go through a lot of emotional stress thinking that they have an illness based on what the twins tell them. And who knows how much money someone may waste on doctor's appointments trying to find out more about something that the twins tell them that they have. So maybe instead of making excuses for why a reading may not be accurate, maybe just don't do it in the first place, especially when it comes to medical stuff. But yeah, the twins are full of excuses. Another excuse that the twins use is that the future is fluid and that things can change before their prediction comes to fruition. What, what we believe is happening is the future is fluid and we've said this many times, haven't we Shane? Yes. It's not etched in stone, the future is fluid. It is subject to many different variables. We say it's up to your will and intention. In other words, we do have free will, we can change our destiny. We totally believe this. So if that's the case, doesn't that make all of their predictions redundant? It's like why even make predictions and charge hundreds and hundreds of dollars for them if something can change at the drop of a hat or not be right because someone isn't open-minded enough or someone's will and intention is set on something else. I get it, there are people who are willing to pay for even that kind of vagueness and flimsiness of their predictions, but the twins claim to want to help people and aren't doing it for money. And if that's the case, don't charge so damn much and don't work doing something that has so many variables involved that could cause someone a lot of distress. Like if they were doing some good honest work, they wouldn't need this many get out clauses. Anyways, now I wanna talk about one of the books that the twins have published. I found their book separated at Earth on eBay secondhand for $15. So I thought that because I'm not supporting the twins directly that I'd buy it and talk about it in this video. And it is a memoir, so they talk about their life prior to their psychic abilities. They talk about them developing their abilities and they give some interesting insights about their lives as psychics. And that's basically what I want to go over the most because they give away some pretty telling information. So yeah, I'm not going to go through and critique how this book is written by any means. I'm just gonna go through and share with you all all the tea that I found. So yeah, this is the book. And as you can see, I have bookmarked a few pages in here and I'm just going to share what I found. One thing that stood out to me is that they created a performing arts company called Pop Theatrics, and that was pretty successful and it ran for over a decade. So I thought that was interesting. And on this page, when they list off a whole bunch of things they've done, they say improvisational comedy became our forte. So the twins know how to improvise, which fits perfectly into being a psychic because you have to constantly make things up. And then later in the book, they talk more about their psychic stuff and they mention the kind of clients that they usually get. We have found that many people who seek readings from us have a dream of fame and fortune. And I think that's interesting that they would mention that because that's kind of admitting that they know what to expect when they're doing a reading, which puts them at an advantage. If they know that their average client wants fame and fortune, they can work off that and really just manipulate the situation better if they think they know what their client wants. Anyways, all I have written on this post-it note is fake story. Because throughout this book, there are just so many stories that are so obviously fake. Like on this page, being the psychic twins is like living in a constant reality TV show. Every interaction has the potential to become performance art. And they talk about bumping into some person at the grocery store and how they just start shooting off information about this person. Like you have exactly this many kids and your sister has exactly that many kids and the crockery that you came here for is just around the corner. Like I'm sure that is how they wish their psychic readings went, but what we've gotten from the twins in real life is just nothing like that. They are never that accurate. And stories like that with insane amounts of accuracy are just scattered around the book. Like their 9-11 prediction wasn't even as accurate and detailed as that. They're definitely not fooling us with those stories. And then they talk about how they went on a TV show called The Other Side. And that TV show focuses on metaphysical stuff like UFOs and ghosts and psychics of course and they talk about their experience going on that show and how they bump into another fellow psychic sylvia brown if you don't know who sylvia brown is she is a psychic 
allegedly, she has had some very big psychic blunders on TV. She is a big fake, and at this point, everybody knows it. I lost my boyfriend tragically um, a few years ago. They never found him. And I've had such a hard time since every day. The reason why you didn't find him is because he's in water. And find him in water, it's like the girl that's missing in Aruba. You can't find somebody. Well, it was September 11th. There was no, he was a fireman, but. But it's no surprise that in this book, the twins give validity to Sylvia Brown. Terry was developing a throbbing migraine headache. Psychic Sylvia Brown bustled into the room with her husband. Who's got the migraine? She exclaimed. We laughed and Terry owned up that the headache was hers. So yeah, just a couple of fake psychics approving another fake psychic. And in this part of the book, they kind of call out other psychics for having vague predictions, which is of course pretty ironic. We hold ourselves to a high degree of integrity. And at first we felt we needed to know everything like a sentient computer. We later learned that no psychic could possibly do this and that other psychics are very vague in their information. We have been told we are much more detailed and more accurate than other psychics. Oh really? <laughs> so yeah, it kind of seems like they know that their predictions and readings aren't super detailed, but they're just like, well, we're more accurate and less vague than other psychics. So that justifies us charging $500 for a reading. But yeah, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to go through from this book. And I've actually made an exclusive video available on my Patreon of me debunking some of the Psychic Twins predictions. So if you wanna sign up to my Patreon to see that, the link is in the description box below. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drink water, be nice to animals. Let's take a moment of silence for everyone who has to deal with Karens and I'll see you in my next video.